Hey, there's a whole lot of city to see, so stick around. Garden style. Today I'm in Chicago, or the Windy City as it's sometimes called. What a great place to discover new ways to grow, cook, and design. Now, I've been to Chicago many times, and there's so many amazing things to see. But we're back, and we've got a whole new slate of some great opportunities. In today's show, we'll visit the spectacular Garfield Park Conservatory, then a tasty dish from Chicago's Market House Restaurant. And later, some great ideas on incorporating a fabulous view of this beautiful city. All this awaits just after the break. Thanks for joining me as we explore some amazing locales here in the Windy City. Even though Chicago is the third largest city in the country, there are some amazing outdoor spaces and indoor spaces to explore. Take this place for instance, two and a half acres under glass. Now that's not a series of containers of plants, this is a planted landscape. To learn more about it, why don't we catch up with my friend Mary. Mary, this is such an astonishing place. Well, this is the gem of the conservatory, really. This I is the, it. This room is the most intact room from its start in 1908. These plants uh, were here long before any flowering plants were on the planet. Right, so these are right. some of the earliest plants on Earth. So many of these plants literally go back to the Jurassic period, which would be 200 million plus years. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, for instance, right here we have a cycad. Wow, look at that one. Isn't that amazing? It's a now, huge specimen. The, these plants are over 300 years oh old, my just gosh. this plant. That's what's so cool about this room. Look at these ferns over here. Yeah, we have about 150 different kinds of species of ferns. Really? I mean, that's just ferns alone. I so. love the way Jensen designed this and that you're walking down these hallways of ancient plants. Yeah, he was a genius. He stratified these rocks so that it would look like ancient Illinois. This is what basically the geology uh, from around here is. So this is really what uh, Illinois would have looked like 200 million years ago. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly That's right. And notice that you have this sculpture here in the pond. Yeah, we have art exhibits here as part of the work that we do. How nice. We uh, ask that the artists uh, somehow relate to the plants. So you can see that there's some leaf shapes within this uh, sculpture. Right. It's I love a, that combination of art and nature. Yeah, because yeah. it helps people understand the nature a little bit better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Yeah. It's just marvelous. When we return, we'll take a look at some sweet plants. My name is Robin Klein. I am the Assistant Director of Programs and Interpretation here at the Garfield Park Conservatory. We're standing in the middle of the conservatory in one of our newest rooms, Sugar from the Sun. Sugar from the Sun is a room that we designed to really showcase for folks the miracle that plants are. I think we see plants around us all the time and we're not really aware of all the amazing things that they're doing. Like right now, we're standing in the middle of this room and plants are making sugar. 
you get to see what the plants did with a lot of their sugar. They sunk it into their fruits. So these, this is where a lot of plants store their sugar is in the fruits of their trees. So here's a plant that a lot of people actually probably thought did grow on trees, but actually grows straight from the ground, kind of on its own little pedestal, the pineapple plant. And this is the pineapple in its early stage of growth, and it'll probably get to about here as long as it can balance on top of its area for long enough. We have a lot of the tropical fruits that people you know, think of when they think of plants that are at conservatories. But one of the things that we're really, really happy to have is a vanilla orchid. And recently our vanilla orchid actually fruited and we were able to get lots of fruit from our vanilla orchid. And you can see them up there, banana shaped pods that when they dry, they turn into these sort of brown pods. And on the inside, you'll see these tiny, tiny little seeds. And a lot of people will recognize these from the, when they get French vanilla ice cream, you see those little brown seeds in your ice cream. One of my favorite flavors, which is cinnamon, actually comes straight from the bark of a tree. So we have a cinnamon tree here. The flavor that we know, that spicy, yummy flavor that goes in our cinnamon rolls, actually comes from the ground up bark of the cinnamon tree. Another tree that we actually eat different plant parts from is the chewing gum tree. When people originally discovered chewing gum, or when they, when they chewed gum in its original form, it was coming from the sap of the chewing gum tree, and we have a chewing gum tree here as well. There are other parts of plants that we commonly eat that aren't part of the fruit of the tree. There's sugar cane, which is actually the stem of the plant. When we're eating uh, sugar, we're actually eating juice that's been squeezed out of a stem of a plant. The fact that plants are taking the energy from the sun and turning it into chemical energy, what an amazing miracle it is. If you're looking for something really fun to do on a weekend, think about enrolling in a cooking class or even a cooking school. I'm here in Chicago at the largest cooking school called The Chopping Block. It's a lot of fun. I'm here to demo a couple of really simple yet tasty recipes. Then I'm going to turn it over to the chefs and they're using some of the best, freshest ingredients. What? could be better than for us all to get together as friends and have a meal together and it has come out of the garden. Skin of the orange, just drop it in there. You know, joining a cooking class isn't just about getting together and making someone's recipes. It's a great way to spend time with a loved one or a friend and the perfect way to check out all the local culture and meet some new people. You can actually learn techniques that are helpful in the kitchen. And my favorite part is getting to taste all that delicious food. Well, that was certainly a lot of fun. So why don't we check in with Chef Walton over at the Market House. He's got some great things cooking up over there. Scott demonstrates how to make this delicious recipe with locally raised chicken and fresh vegetables straight from his own rooftop garden. The, the key in getting that crispy skin, besides the honey cayenne mop doing its, its job in crisping up the skin, is to air dry the chicken. It has to be air dried. It's the only way to take that moisture between the skin and the flesh of the protein out of the bird, and that's gonna allow you to get that crispiness when it hits that grill. Obviously buying a really, really, you know, nice piece of chicken, you know, hormone and enzyme free. So we do a half chicken. So what we've done is left the wing joint under the breast, and we've deboned the thigh completely in this chicken. We're gonna do a quick little season. A little Allen cracked pepper, both sides of cracked pepper for Allen. We're just gonna do a little touch of olive oil on both sides. Skin side down. We'll let this go for two to three minutes on the front side just to get a nice char on it. We'll 
just get a nice little mark and a sear on the bottom side of the flesh skin, not overly on the flesh side, because I don't want to dry out that protein. Then we're going to go into the pan. The honey and the, the, the chicken consomme or chicken stock or veg stock, whatever you choose to use, is actually going to naturally baste inside the, the pan in the oven. It's, it's a very simple mop. It's four spices, lemon juice, and honey. But I think the, the technique is, is the most important part of, of this whole chicken dish, is toasting those spices. So in a pretty hot pan over medium-high heat, we're going to start toasting these seeds. What this is going to do is actually bring out the essential oils. This is about a half a cup of coriander seed. Right here we have about a quarter cup of cumin seed. And once you, you, you'll be able to smell it, and you can hear it a little bit, the oil starting to come out and toast up again. What it's doing is re releasing those essential, essential oils in the pan, which is going to start perfuming the, the, the honey cayenne mop. This is going to take 30 to 40 seconds. Now you're really starting to, to get that smell coming off of it. Once you get that smell, you're going to add your dried spices, which is the cayenne and the paprika. Even though these are dried as well, all herbs and spices that are dried have essential oils in them. And, you, and the perfume of the, of the, the spices just, it just lights up the kitchen. I mean, and you really, the, the nose will tell you when, when the spices are toasted. And that's it. Once you get the nose and the perfume off of it, you want to shut it down. What we're going to do, everybody probably knows what this is, is your coffee grinder. We actually in the restaurant use this as a spice grinder. Quick little tip, give it a little shake. Takes all the heavy from the top, puts it on the bottom, get it mixed, blended real well. We want a fine grind on this actually. Going in with one cup of Meyer lemon juice, one quart of Indiana honey. That's where I'm from, that's why it's Indiana honey. A couple pinches of kosher salt. A little cracked pepper. I know Alan loves his cracked peppercorn. And then we're just gonna whisk this together. Just be careful, because the honey's a little thick. It's a little messy, but slowly the lemon juice is gonna thin it out a little bit. Give it a little quick taste. Make sure we're seasoned right. Oh, money. Spot on. We'll get a little of our honey cayenne mop in our pan. This is just a little clarified chicken stock in there. So we'll go in our pan, just put a little bit of fresh parsley in it, and let's go to the oven with it. Home oven, I would say, you know, 400, 425, quick tip. The sugars are gonna caramelize rather quickly. They're gonna kind of foam up and go around the chicken. So if you're worried about your oven or your stove at home, put a pan underneath this pan. So if there's any boil over, it's not gonna burn on the bottom of your stove. Because you have this really, really rich and crispy chicken with, with all those really intense spices. You need something to cut through that. So just a nice little bistro salad. If you have some, if you can get some fresh arugula at your market or your farmer's market, and then maybe just a little fresh lemon vinaigrette to finish it off. A few local potatoes, and that's it. A spectacular view of the second city awaits just after the break. What an amazing view. You really don't need very much in a room when you have this as all of your art. And you really think about that, I suppose, when you're designing one of these urban apartments. And I would think you would want to keep the furnishings really low and unobtrusive so you don't block the view. And I think also, along with the height of the furniture, the color palette needs to be sensitive to all that's going on and it's yes. busy behind you. Well, I've noticed the walls in this room, they're sort of a slate blue, which is very nice. It seems to work sort of with the tone that you see outside along the skyline. Absolutely. I mean, there's no reason to bring a jarring, bold color in here when you have this peaceful, right. serene. And yeah. that's, that's the most important thing. When one has a view like this mm. and up so high, you right. want to keep it that that is, is your focal point.
You know, Julie, I have to say that when you work in these spaces where you're so up in the air, I mean, we're what, I don't know, on the 20-something floor. That's correct. You, you look out and, and during the day it's constantly changing because of the sun, but the sun can be a real issue that you have to deal with. I don't think that one could spend a lot of time in this space with this particular time of right, day we're due without west wearing here. their sunglasses. Right, right, yeah. So here we have no shade and over here the shade is drawn and you can see how it filters the light and really softens the light in the room. It makes it really, really quite beautiful. And it does, and everything, you still see the silhouettes of the buildings behind it, so it's not completely blocked out. You know, framing these views and, and seeing the city, seeing that cityscape, which is absolutely colossal, I mean, back to your point, you really don't need a lot of art. And so many of the walls here are windows. That's correct, and that's what that's what this is all about. Sure, is enveloping the outside and the inside, merging the two, and you know making that that's the experience. And I think that um, there is not a lot of furniture necessarily in this urban apartment. Right. And it feels maybe a little bit more bare, but I think that the the spareness of it yes. is what is needed to feel complete in, in this environment. Well, it certainly works. I mean, you know, we talked about how in other the rooms, the furniture was very low. I mean, this sofa is a great example of that in these chairs. I mean, you really don't have these tall objects. I mean, the, certainly the, the lamps are tall, but they're set against a wall. Absolutely. You know, I have to say, I am just thrilled about the dining room chairs because even some of the furniture, you can see through it. They're wonderfully comfortable, which you wouldn't expect. No, and, you wouldn't. And you can you can sit back and enjoy and, and enjoy the views. Well, they seem extremely sturdy as well. They are indeed. Yes, well, you know, I think this is the perfect time of day to have a glass of wine as the sun is beginning to set. I am in. <laughs> Let's do it. There's more garden style just after the break. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed exploring this great city with me today. And I hope along the way you found some things that will inspire you to grow, cook, and design your life in a much more beautiful way. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith for Garden Style. Falling like this. Sorry. Sorry, sister, but it's toast. It's full of ancient plants. Yeah, it's kind of like dinosaur land. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a scene from Jurassic Park. Yeah, <laughs> you might uh, you might see a I Tyrannosaurus see... Rex. Oh dear. Peek out <laughs> yeah, from the uh, corner. Her. Plants are over 300 years oh old. My just gosh. this plant. Well, that plant could be like the oldest house plant in America. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>